Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glow Shot Art, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the March 2024 Sketch Box. This box has tons of fun green art supplies in it, and I'm gonna show you how to use them together and how to create volume. Ready? Let's go. The surface in this month's box is the Hanamule Manga Layout and Illustration Paper. There are 20 sheets of fairly thin paper in here that are perfect for working with alcohol markers. They're coated on the back, so there's absolutely no bleed through. We also have two Acrylograph Archer and Olive pens in Shroom and Artichoke. I recommend shaking up your pen and activating the nib at the beginning of every drawing session. These pens are especially great at bold graphic lines, and if you want to build up more value, I recommend cross-hatching. That is drawing lines in a variety of different directions to build up density. It's also really fun to play around with stippling gradients with these pens as well. The very first time you use one of these pens, you want to shake it for about 60 seconds, and then activate the nib by pressing it down into to the paper. Wait for the paint to run and then you're ready to go. When your drawing session is complete, remember to clean off your nib so that the paint doesn't dry and clog your pen. One of my very favorite things to do with these pens is some stream of conscious doodling. I love that the lines are really permanent and that they're bold even if I'm not pressing all that hard. And that helps me stay really present and in the moment and work with whatever comes down onto the page. If I make a mistake, I just adjust and adapt it and make it work rather than erasing and overthinking it too much. Together, let's create a page of little fun doodles that remind you of spring. Here I have a watering can with flowers, some blooming tulips, a nest with eggs in it, a kite, a variety of different leaves and fresh new plants. Use these two gorgeous contrasting colors to create a full spread of doodles. And don't overthink this too much. Keep it light and playful and encourage your creative juices to run wild. Next up, we have two La Plume alcohol markers in spring green and grass green. And we also have the Topic chow marker in olive. I love the way that these markers just slide across the surface of this paper. This slick paper holds all of your alcohol marker on the top so it's not seeping in and getting used up in the tooth of the paper. That means that your markers are going to last a long time on this paper. Experiment using different parts of this brush tip to create a variety of different marks. The Copic Chow also has a chisel tip in addition to its brush tip, which will allow you to lay in big areas of color. Using these three markers, let's create a gradient. Start with the olive and build up color on the lower third. You will layer more towards the bottom so that you're concentrating that color darkest at the edge. Then we'll transition to the grass green marker. Fill in the middle third evenly and then concentrate more layers towards the center, feathering it off in either direction. Lastly, we'll transition to the spring green. Fill in the top third of this gradient with your spring green and layer more material towards the top. You can go over your layers as much as you would like to, but one characteristic of this paper is that your markers are not going to blend a ton. You're going to rely more on the opacity to create the gradient. Next up, we have our Gold Faber colored pencil in black and our Holbein white colored pencil. To build up colored pencil, we always work in thin layers and work your pencil in a variety of different directions to build up that opacity. You can also create a gradient by varying your pressure and easing off of it as you move towards the lighter values. This pencil is going to work really well to lay in a light sketch for our marker drawings, and it's also great at showing volume. We're going to illustrate volume. Let's start with a sketch of a watering can and get all of those proportions laid in really lightly first. Now, shading is one way to illustrate volume, but another way is cross contour. Cross contour refers to the direction of the mark that we're laying over our object. Here I am creating really rounded cylindrical marks that are wrapping around the body of the watering can. That creates a three-dimensional illusion and allows us to build up tons of volume without relying too much on shading. 
Now it's time to put all these materials and skills together and we're going to sketch a pair. Start with your black gold Faber colored pencil and lay in the basic proportions of the pair so that you know where it sits on the page. Keep it light so that if you need to make adjustments, it's easy to do so. Now using the lightest marker, the spring green, lay in a solid layer of color over the entire area with the exception of those light bright highlights. We are not going to be able to go all the way back to white. So keep the white of the paper available. Next, we'll transition to the middle green or the grass green marker, and we'll lay in the shadows a little bit heavier towards the right side. Notice that I am using a rounded mark or a cross contour mark that's showing volume. And I'm emphasizing these with the olive green. After all of the marker is done, I'm going to use my black colored pencil and I'm going to emphasize the cross contour mark. I'm using a wrapping line to show the three dimensional volume of the pair. And now it's finally time to play around with this glorious white colored pencil. This is a premier colored pencil that lays right over the top of your marker and is able to heighten the value. Last but not least, I'm using those Acrylograph pens to add a little bit more volume and to add the texture on top of the pair. The prompt this month is succulent, and this is the perfect subject to illustrate what these materials are capable of. Start with a sketch of a succulent. I am using a photo reference that I took on vacation. You can use this photo reference for your sketch, or I empower you to go out and take some of your own photographs of plants and images that you're interested in drawing. Once you have a basic layout completed, I go over my layout again, just to make sure that everything is on point. And then I'm filling the entire surface in with the lightest marker, the spring green. Whenever possible, I'm using the direction of my mark to help enhance the volume. I'm transitioning back and forth between the spring green and the grass green to really emphasize these shadows and to create a gradient in some areas so the edges of the shadows aren't too hard. Once that is completed and I have a good sense of volume and shadow on the surface of the succulent, I'm coming in with olive and I'm darkening the value of the background so that the succulent really stands out. And I'm also using the marker in just a few areas inside the succulent. The next step is to use the colored pencil to emphasize and clean up these shadows and to add some more volume. I'm also using the colored pencil to really make the background super dark so that I'm creating more and more contrast. The white colored pencil is so great at heightening the value in a really soft and subtle way. So I'm using that to really enhance the value in each of these leaves or petals of the succulent. If I wanted a really strong bright white highlight, I would need to reserve that at the beginning. The last step here is to just enhance the volume and to bring the attention to a couple key parts of the succulent with the acrylograph pens. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about working with these materials and adding volume to your drawings, and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxMarch when you post your work online. For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.